I got no head. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kanekura Show, where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not the game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. What's that? Halloween is over. Fuck! Uh, well, that doesn't really matter. I mean, I love Halloween far too much to just let my Halloween special slide away like that. I mean, who cares if I couldn't fit in a video on Halloween? My schedule didn't fit that in, but who cares? Uh, well, you know, this has to be done. I have to do some sort of Halloween special, even if it is after Halloween, but I need to find a decent reason to do something scary after Halloween, so... What should I do? Um... Yes! I know! I'll call Jordan underneath. I mean, his channel is pretty much Halloween 24-7. Every video is Halloween. Every minute of every day. So I'll just call him up and see if I can do something. Hello, Jordan. It's me. Fuck off, Caddy. Hello? Don't ever do that again. I'm sorry, just being alone for all these years really messes with your- Jordan, I want to talk about something scary for Halloween, but um, Halloween was two days ago, so do you think you can help me out at all? You mean, like, collaborate? Yes. Review something... together? Yes. Okay. Aha! Perfect! In which case, can we do Resident, Resident Evil, Evil Zero? How did you know I was gonna say that? You should never have called me. And with that, let's talk about Resident Evil Zero. So, is everyone ready for some true terror? Well, you can get some. As long as you stay far away from these chains here because they're really dangerous. Safety is this channel's number one priority and viewer security is paramount to enjoying each and every single episode. Actually, they aren't real. Look. Plastic. Don't worry. I won't get hurt. <laughs> Had you going though, didn't I? And, um, Jordan underneath. Well, here's a game that not many people have talked about, the GameCube exclusive Resident Evil Zero. As far as I understand, this was the final traditional fixed camera exploration in canon Resi game to ever be made, and unfortunately it also feels like that, because it's almost THE transitional Resi game. The transition to more action, the transition to little build-up, the transition to monsters coming at you and going every second, it's, it's a bit of a messy game. No pun intended. Yummy. Yeah, honestly, I don't know how I feel about this game. Resident Evil Zero is not an easy game to talk about. I mean, it isn't necessarily a bad game, but I wouldn't really call it a good game either. It's just weird. And flawed. And incredibly awkward. And sure, I suppose the critics liked it, but the critics also liked Resident Evil 6. So forgive me for not bouncing out of my seat in shock. Oh, speaking of, you know who else liked Resident Evil 6? <laughs> what? No! I don't like Resident Evil 6! You gave it a 3.5 out of 5. That video is old and it's outdated. I was very young. And... Very foolish. Sure you were. The thing is, Resident Evil Zero is nothing like the maddening monstrosity of Resident Evil 6. Resi 6 was just kind of an obvious mess. It was a disordered little train wreck of a game ruined by focus groups and a complete lack of integrity on Capcom's part. It was shallow and disappointing. Nothing worth talking about, in my opinion. But Resident Evil Zero is a different story. A very different story. This is just a weird fucking game. I think I'd call it the oddball of the Resident <laughs> Evil series. It feels like a game that tried to keep the great aspects of the Resi formula, but for some reason changed everything up within that formula. In completely the wrong way. But hey! Let's stop beating around the hairy bush and show everyone what we mean. Although before we do that, first things first, we uh, gotta just, gotta just clean these up at the TV. Cause, yeah. Get, get, get a little stinky. So, our game begins with an announcer that sounds like a rapper. Resident Evil 
Zero. And we are 18-year-old Rebecca Chambers, a member of the Stars Police Force Bravo team, who were the first team in the original Resident Evil sent in to investigate these cannibalistic murders in the Arclay Mountains. Yes, this game is a prequel, and it's a prequel to the entirety of Resident Evil. Anyway, if you've played Resi 1, I'm sure you know the story. Bravo team ends up crash landing in the middle of the woods and getting killed. And so Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Albert Wesker, Brad Vickers, Joseph Frost, and Barry Burton are sent in to find them. But instead of finding their friends, they end up finding a spooky mansion filled to the brim with dark secrets, unsolved mysteries, evil plots, and of course, zombies and monsters. Zombies and monsters? Yes, zombies and monsters. Zombies and monsters. Zombies and monsters. But this isn't Resident Evil 1 and there's no Jill sandwiches, so instead we're stuck with Rebecca who finds a train. Riveting. Either way, I have to say something before we continue. This game is beautiful. Seriously. Games like this really make me miss pre-rendered backgrounds. This game is completely gorgeous. I mean, I mean, just look at it. And as expected, it controls like a fucking tank. And true Resident Evil, ladies and gentlemen. And the music is fantastically ominous and expressive to boot. It's great that after the RE1 remake on the GameCube, Capcom tried to make another RE game that feels exactly like it. And props to them because it really does feel like it. The atmosphere in some parts of this game just astounds me, I must be honest. The way it feels like traditional Resident is even prevalent in the cheesiness levels. I need to know the truth. Did you kill 23 people? I'm not going to judge you. What happened? It's worse than... We, we can't. You must be careful, Rebecca. The, the forest is full of... Yep, the levels here are like... I, I think it's about vintage cheddar. Even in the text and diary entries, this game never ceases to make me laugh. Yep. Edward was just so happy a few hours ago. What a shame that he's dead, eh? Instead, you brush it off like he just got dumped. However, the presentation may be fantastic, but the thing with this game that leaves me split, though, is the gameplay. The sad thing is that there are tons of great ideas here, but the way that they are executed is not as great as the idea, which is great. I mean, for instance, there's just so much wrong with this damn intro sequence. This whole entire train portion of the game, I'm afraid, is really bad. We find out that a former Marine death row inmate called Billy Cohen has escaped, and so, logically, we were told to split up earlier. This man killed 23 innocent people and we're told to split up in the forest. Idiots! Anyway, zombies happen, blah, 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 and then we find Billy on a train. Lieutenant Cohen. So, you seem to know me. Been fantasizing about me, have you? <laughs> well, this guy's a complete dick. I hope we're not stuck with him. And here we have the biggest problem with the game, ladies and gentlemen. Two bloody characters. Yes, what sets Resident Evil Zero apart from all the other games in the series is the fact that you have to spend this game, this whole game, playing as two different people. You have to run around as both Billy and Rebecca, switching back and forth between the two of them, forcing them to work together, forcing them to talk, flirt, swap items, kill monsters, save each other's lives, make out with each other, whatever the hell they like to do. And you know what? It never, ever works. It just completely ruins the flow of the game. And it takes away from the lonely, creepy atmosphere that made old Resident Evil so great. And don't get me wrong, I love Resident Evil. The Resident Evil remake on the GameCube is one of my favorite games of all time. And while I do like how similar this game is to that one, especially in terms of design, it's just not the same. It's not as lonely. It's not as scary. I mean, how am I supposed to be scared of this game when Billy's following me around this train, snarking and flirting with his flirty, snarky voice? All right, Miss Do-It-Yourself. What should I call you? The name is Rebecca Chambers, but that's Officer Chambers to you. Well, it could be worse. I mean, the gender roles could be reversed. I mean, could you imagine if Rebecca was the one flirting and then Billy was the one snarking his face off? I mean, what do you think that would sound like? You know, I've always wanted to say this, but I think you're really attractive, B -b Billy. I told you I'm not interested, Rebecca. B -b -b but I like you, B -b Billy? You know something? I've killed 23 people and I won't hesitate to just shoot you in the- Just give me a chance! Give me a chance, Billy! Wait, what were we talking about? I don't remember. We were reviewing Resident Evil 4. Or 2. 
or seven. We're not very good at this, are we? Anyway, as the game's intro goes on, our characters continue exploring the mysterious train. <laughs> across some zombies, some dogs, some leeches. Then we see some leeches making a zombie, which not only makes no goddamn sense at all, but is also pretty fucking gross. <laughs> and then there's a scary man in a dress that sings opera in the most disturbing manner you could ever imagine. Yep, it's not scary, Capcom. And then we encounter the first boss level, completely out of fucking nowhere, a giant scorpion. <laughs> what? And guess what you do here? You aim at the floor, wait, and then shoot. That's it. It's fucking awful. Please, can, can you... Can you please just, can you stop? Now the train setting itself, where really damn cool, is unfortunately far too cramped and thin spread to leave you feeling dread around every corner because there are no corners. Imagine if you played the entirety of Resident Evil 1 on one long corridor of the entire mansion. Yeah, that's what this whole train bit feels like. Kinda like this. <laughs> you don't ever feel cut off from the world and completely surrounded by your own unexpected death. You just feel tired and annoyed from sprinting back and forth and up and down stairs trying to reach your next goal. Also within this train sequence, the game introduces you to so many goddamn enemies with no buildup, no subtlety, and no surprising reveal whatsoever. I think there's a little too much variety in Resident Evil Evil Zero. Like, the game is spending the first two hours of itself desperately trying to grab your attention by jiggling keys in your face. Mutant zombie keys. That eat you. I mean, there's just something really not scary about being stuck on a small train with killer dogs, a bunch of zombies, a thousand bloodthirsty leeches, two main characters, a silly anime character standing outside and singing opera, and a fucking giant scorpion to top it all off. I mean, how can you say all that without just laughing? Seriously, this is not how you start a survival horror game. How can I explain this better? Remember the first zombie from Resident Evil 1? Remember how evil eerie that encounter was? How slowly presented and carefully revealed it was? I mean, everyone remembers that scene. You turn the corner, see the zombie from behind, and then he turns around and rears his hideous white face. See, that right there, that's subtlety. That's presentation. That is horror. But in Resident Evil Zero, when Rebecca sees her first zombie, the whole scene is almost just glanced over. The zombie gets up and moans in the silliest way possible. And then a bunch of other zombies pop up out of nowhere and Rebecca just shoots them down. What just happened? I, I thought they were dead. I don't know, it just feels rushed and flimsy and dumb. Oh, and let's talk about the main gameplay mechanic, playing as two characters at once. Once you're attached to this dick, the game more or less becomes a constant escort mission from start to end. First off, try using both controller sticks to control both characters with Resident Evil tank controls. Go on, give it a try, I dare you. As you can guess, this is near fucking impossible, so 90% of the game is then spent with you playing with the AI, which is... meh. It works well enough with following you, but then it likes to get in your way, sometimes not attack enemies at all when you specifically ask it to, and basically just ruin your super happy fun time. And that's a shame because the way that the partner controls are mapped to the pad, I really like. To switch characters, just hit X, and then to tell them to wait or follow you, just hit start. Simple, effective. Although, like we mentioned earlier with the whole constant monsters thing, the problem is that because of your partner, you have to look after them, and half the time that means you have to kill everything you see on the screen, just to be safe that your partner won't get caught. In previous Resi games, whenever you are low on health or ammo, you could make panic decisions on which enemies to use your final bullets on, and those games encouraged you to think of more strategies other than fighting head on. However, with a partner AI that is thrown out the window because of how much they can get into trouble and get you a game over. Especially in the parts when you're forced to split up and then you hear your partner crying over the radio for help because you forgot about that one hidden zombie slowly eating away at them and they can't just push them away for a fucking second while you- I mean there are some times where you can get away with running past them but when your game is built around two different playable characters meaning more ammo and more guns to find anyway why not just kill everything you see? There's ammo everywhere in this game and I don't know about you Jordan but I never ran out of the stuff. I couldn't pick up other items because of how much fucking ammo I had. The monsters in this game just do not 
not carry the same weight as the ones from the past, and that sucks. Yeah, when it comes down to it, the gameplay really is the worst thing. I mean, I could forgive Resi Zero for not being very scary if it was at least fun to play, but it's not fun to play. Most of the game is just spent shuffling around the inventory screen. In fact, yeah, that's all this game is. The inventory. They shouldn't have called this game Resident Evil Zero. They should have called it Menu Mania, because that's really all it is. You will literally be spending 75% of the game messing around in the inventory, just trying to get Rebecca and Billy's stupid shit in order. And you're never sure which character should hold what. You're never sure which character is gonna disappear, or end up getting kidnapped in the next 10 minutes. And when it does happen, what do you know? It's the character who's holding all the fucking ammo. Don't worry, Rebecca, you just stay there in that giant centipede's mouth and I'll toy around with the inventory for another five hours. Or just reset the game. <sighs> Okay, okay, it sounds like we completely hate this game, but ugh, that isn't actually the case. There's a lot of good things in this game, such as, well, for example, the picking up and dropping item sound effects. They fucking crack me up. And yes, I did just say dropping and picking up, probably the best thing about this game. Unlike previous Resident Evils, you can pick up and drop any item you wish at any point of the game, and even combine and use items you find without picking them up at all. Unless your inventory is full, in which case that makes no lick of fucking sense. But it is extremely useful for inventory management, especially when the map shows you what the items you dropped are in each room of the area that you're in. That's fantastic. And I find myself dropping ink ribbons all over the place wherever there's a typewriter, saving me from carrying them everywhere, and also assuring me that I have a method of saving wherever I I go. And despite how menu mania this game can be with two characters, you know what? The puzzles I really enjoyed. Some require fourth dimensional thinking with each character in different parts of the area. Some require easy to pick up yet tricky to solve number puzzles under a time limit. And others use riddles and feel extremely silent hilly. In fact, here's some actual notes that I took from this game when I came across a few puzzles that stumped me. Now I haven't done that in a while, I can tell you. Also, I signed it if you want to buy it. Plus, even though the train sequence is indeed poor, the game actually gets much better as it goes on. Would you say that it got... scarier? Well, it gets scarier than the train, at least. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was kind of embarrassing. Well, either way, would you like to carry on with your point there? I'll just go and make myself a nice hot cup of tea. Yes, believe it or not, the game does actually pick itself up right after the train portion. After the train crashes and Billy and Rebecca survive, the game starts to get much bigger and much darker, throwing you into grand gothic mansion hallways, disgusting filthy underground torture chambers, dark demonic genetic experimentation labs, and the whole experience begins to feel much more at home, and much more... Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts out when you set foot in the Arclay training facility, which, wait a minute, that's the mansion. No, really, that's the mansion from Resident Evil. That is literally the same as the first damn mansion from the first damn game. Way to go above and beyond, Capcom. Hey, we need to make a new Resident Evil game, but where should we make it take place? Oh, I know. Let's make it take place in a spooky mansion in the middle of the woods. That's brilliant and original. Oh, and the fact that Billy has a higher defense and is stronger than Rebecca to push items and things like that, yeah, it does make for some tense moments sometimes. But yeah, I agree with you actually, Jordan. Despite the huge problems with the intro and the flaws with most of the way the game works, this is where it starts to shine. You begin to encounter giant mutant bats and all sorts of other crazy shit like that. Every room of the training facility and the secret labs, much like the mansion in Resi 1, has a distinctive personality, a history, and the enemies and tragic diary entries all tell that tale. This last two thirds of the game is where the puzzles get more creative. You're thrown into situations that force you and your partner apart, and everything starts to feel a little bit more unexpected and slightly strange. And nowhere is that unexpectedness more horrifying than it is with... The Leech Man. This guy is an awesome enemy. He's strong, he appears anywhere, his leeches can detach and hurt you, and to top it off, he looks like that. Holy hell, he's creepy. And oh my god, the music that plays whenever he pops into the frame of your screen is horrifying. Just when you think you're safe, it'll catch you off guard unlike anything you could possibly imagine. Oh, jeez. Oh my god, I didn't see that coming. Oh. Well, okay. I'll be prepared for that next time it happens. <laughs> I lied! I'm not ready! 
<laughs> oh yes, the Leech Man. I must agree. The Leech Man is one of my favorite monsters in the entire Resident Evil series. In fact, he's probably my favorite thing about the game. If I ever made a top 10 Resident Evil monsters list, I'd probably put him near the very top. That's a pretty good idea, actually. Maybe I will make a top 10 Resident Evil monsters. <laughs> And from here on out, the game is pretty much your average Resident Evil game. You find items, you solve puzzles, you fight monsters, and of course, you find a hidden laboratory with evil experiments at the end. Also, dialogue. Terrible, terrible, terrible dialogue. Now I will have my revenge on Umbrella, and the world will burn in an inferno of hate! <laughs> You'll pay for what you've done! And all in all, at the end of this nightmare, Rebecca ends up at the Spencer Mansion to kick off Resi 1, and Billy just walks away and never returns. The prequel to Resident Evil 1, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay. Two questions then. One, why doesn't Rebecca help the Stars Alpha team fight in Resident Evil 1 when she clearly has shown to be strong enough to defeat giant mutant leech queens? And two, if Billy just goes away, what was the point of it being at the end? I guess it's time to say goodbye. Well, I guess this is goodbye. I I'll never forget you. Billy. And with that, this game gets the... You know what, actually? Jordan, I was expecting a very juxtaposed review from the both of us after you told me how much you hated this game. I thought I hated it, but you know what? After replaying this game, I'm on the fence with it, just like you. I think it's... Okay. Oh yeah, I understand that, but the only reason I did this sodding collab with you was because I remember really liking this game and you kept telling me how much you hated this game. That was the only joke, that was the point of this video, and you fucked it up. Well, I'm sorry. I just feel like- And just for that, you know, screw this rating bullshit. I'm afraid that you know the fate of every guest star I've ever had on my show, apart from the completionist and unbrutalness. So, I'm afraid, Jordan, you have to die. Oh. Do I? Um, Jordan? What? What's that that you have there? You'll see. Ow! Ow! Jordan! You bumbling baboon! Jordan, you bastards! <laughs> Jordan, why? What do you have to say for yourself now, caddy? You're an asshole, casserole. Ah! Wait a minute. I'm the first person to kill Caddy on his own show. <laughs> You're a penis wrinkle. Yes. You smell funny. Die! Just die! Just die! Hello there everybody and thanks so much for watching my Halloween special video. Yes, I know it's November, but happy Novemberween, I suppose. I gotta say a huge thank you to Jordan Underneath for appearing in this episode. It's been great working with you um, and I'm going to link you one of his videos right on the screen now and you can go and watch it right now. And if you look in the description, you'll find all of my social networks, my Twitches, my um, everything down there. Every single thing is in the description. And also in the description is a link to the blog of the girl who did that amazing makeup for me. Her name is Izza and yep, her, her pretty much her website is in the description. It's 
incredible makeup. I was sitting there for about, like, I think it was 90 minutes, about a two, 90 minutes, I think it was, um, getting that makeup done, and it was so, so, so good. So I've linked her blog in the description. She does some awesome, awesome stuff and writes some really awesome things as well. And, um, yeah, thank you to her and her brother, of course, who filmed pretty much all of this video. Um, and I put his Vimeo page in the description as well. So everything is pretty much in the description. And I'm also going to take this time to give a huge thank you to uh, my top um, Patreon supporters. So um, you guys, thank you so much. Um, Nicole Gunara, Christopher Miller, Tony Pierce, Mohamed Al Sali, Delmar Mullins, Greg Black, Abdullah Almana, Brad Bird, James Tigani, Benjamin Peasley, Ahmed Al Mutawa, and Alan Angert. Thank you so much, all of you guys. And thank everybody at home for watching this video. And if it's your birthday today or watching this video, then happy freaking birthday to you. And please remember to stay beautiful.